So in the previous lecture we talked a little bit about mangrove biology and now we're going to move on to consider the ecology of mangrove uh, forest ecosystems. Now firstly I want to talk to you about the ecosystem functions. Mangroves are really very valuable assets uh, in the countries in which they occur. They're important culturally for many groups of people. And here in this slide you can see uh, indigenous people from Australia extracting uh, a shield from the bark of um, Avicennia mangrove tree. Secondly, they're important for coastal protection and I'm going to talk about that in the next slide. They're extremely important for fisheries production. Globally, there is a very strong relationship between the amount of mangrove present and the amount of fish production in any given area. They're also important for subsistence and extraction of timber and other products are very important in some communities. Finally, they are important uh, places where carbon sequestration occurs and by that I mean the removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and the burying of carbon dioxide as carbon, organic carbon, into the sediments. And I'm going to talk about that in a little while as well. So firstly, the coastal protection fu function from mangroves uh, comes with respect to the protection that they offer from waves and storm surges. So as you can see from this diagram, you can have quite high wave energy that is attenuated by the sediments, by the roots, by the stems and by the foliage of the mangrove trees, which leaves some protection or gives some protection to structures behind the mangroves and that might be for example the seawall. Now the economic value of mangroves in protecting from typhoons in Asia has been estimated to be about $10,000 per hectare. So in addition to the coastal protection functions of mangrove forests, mangroves are incredibly important for fisheries production. Mangroves are nurseries for some sp fish species, so some species spend their juvenile phases in the mangroves. They're really rich resources for grazers and predators who might uh, come into the mangroves with every tidal cycle. The economic value of mangroves for fisheries was estimated to be around US $37,500 per hectare. So this is obviously an incredibly important resource for sustainable fisheries. So we've talked about coastal protection and also uh, fisheries production, but mangroves also have huge carbon stocks and perform the service of carbon sequestration. So taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and sinking it to their biomass and particularly to their soils for decades and even millennia. So mangrove sediments we know are globally significant carbon stocks and if you look at this slide here you can see that ecosystem carbon storage on the y-axis and four different kinds of forested ecosystems, boreal, temperate and tropical upland forests. But you'll notice that those mangroves, the Indo-Pacific mangroves, have a much larger carbon storage than the other ecosystems. Now this large carbon store arises because there is low oxygen in the sediments that slows decomposition of organic matter. Root production, so additions to that carbon stock, uh, uh, is very high. And roots, all of those above ground roots that we've seen pictures of, they trap sediments, they trap leaf litter, they trap carbon and it gets incorporated into the soil volume. And finally, soil volumes increase over time with this added material of sediments coming on the surface and roots below ground. And that leads to this increase in the carbon stock over time. So these huge carbon stocks in mangroves and their role in carbon sequestration, so taking CO2 carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and it moving it into soils where it is stored, has given rise to the suggestion that this carbon stock and carbon sequestration can be useful 
for uh, enhancing conservation projects. And this is because there are markets for carbon. For example, the Verified Carbon Standard is a place where carbon can be bought and sold. If you're interested in these things, there are links associated with this lecture so you can go and explore more. Within the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, there is also recently re released guidelines on how countries can account for carbon emissions caused by destruction and degradation of mangrove habitats and also carbon gains through restoration. Finally, mangroves can be included in the reduced emissions from deforestation and degradation of tropical forests for developing countries, the RED plus mechanism or framework. And uh, there are some really interesting projects that are underway in Madagascar and Africa.